I am here to introduce your speaker. All right, Angela is known for implementing technology to operate a paperless organization and leveraging her education in psychology, yes, psychology, to master communication with clients, vendors, and team members. As a thriving entrepreneur, her passion for helping others has carried her from starting her career in mental health. Y'all know I had to talk to her about that, right? <laughs> career in mental health to being one of the most well-known educators and, and celebrity wedding planners in the world. Mental health, wedding plan. Okay, never mind. I, I, I see some, yes, yes, I see some familiar faces in here, so I know some people in here, so they can, they can get that. So as a result of her business success, Angela is a member of the Entrepreneurs Organization, a global business network for entrepreneurs whose companies gross more than one million annually. She's been featured in Success Magazine for motorizing, motorizing an industry better known for tool than tech. Of course, of course, I saw that I said, tool? What in the world is tool? So some of you wedding planners may know what tool is. Y'all know what tool is? You do? I had no idea. She said it's old school stuff. In the decor. In the decor world. So, of course, me, I had no idea. No idea what it was. I, I am a DJ. <laughs> so a DJ has no idea what tool is. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Angela Prophet. Are you going to spin some tunes for us later? I am going to play some tunes for you. Yay, awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. I know that it's early, so I'll try to have lots of energy. How many of y'all are early birds? Oh, this side of the room. And you guys are night owls? Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, okay, well, thank you so much for coming. Like you said, I'm Angela Prophet. I know a couple of you in here. Um, for those of you who I don't know, thanks for coming. And are you all planners? If you're not a planner, tell me what you do. Musician? Bakery. Bakery? So you do wedding cakes? Awesome. What do you do? I'm not, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm here with my wife. Oh, you're such an awesome I'm husband. Here. Here. Support. I love it. Teamwork. I love it. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk really fast because I have a lot of stuff that I want to share with you guys. And I believe that Julie shared the Dropbox. Did everybody get it? So in the Dropbox should be our presentations. If not, let me know. I can help fix that for you. And then some of the stuff I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk <laughs> about it more in depth later this afternoon. I think around 4, 4.15ish. So if you want to come back and bring all of your technology, I can answer any of your questions. So I do operate all on Apple products. However, I do know how to work a PC, and I do know how to work a Droid a little bit. So, but usually all the apps and all the software, it crosses over just fine. So if you do have questions, anything about technology or productivity, after the session, obviously, take down your questions. I'm happy to answer. I'm here to help. We're here to teach and help build your business. So disclosure, I'm sharing key experiences on what has worked for us. I'm not promising anything. Um, and did y'all get the hashtags for the Wedding Market Summit? Mm -hmm. I use Productivity Therapist. Um, my background, as he said, was in therapy. I went to nursing school, hated it. Um, I did work in a morgue. I didn't know what a morgue was, but I knew a girl that I taught gymnastics to, and I liked her, and they needed a secretary. And it sounded fun, but I didn't know it was with dead people. Um, but that's okay. Like, I learned a lot, and I was really, really good at anatomy, but I was not good inflicting pain on live people. So when I went to give shots, I'm like, this is not going to work because I'm making people cry. So then I went into mental health to help people, how many of you in here are in the wedding industry because you love to help people? I hope you all raise your hand because if you're not, that's not good. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys, like I've put together this recipe, which is funny because I don't cook anything. Uh, I can do a lot of stuff, but I cannot cook. And so there's a joke behind that. But there's seven steps that I feel in our experience that we have mastered through business and through the wedding industry. And so people say, oh, you work with Bradzillas, and you, and I'm like, no, we don't tolerate that. 
that doesn't live in my world because I worked with really, really sick people. And if you think you have a problem, I can tell you some stories of real problems. And you don't have a problem. Anything that you have, we can fix. Uh, but the first thing is passion. So when I asked you guys, hopefully you love people. If you don't, if you're not passionate about people, people can see through that. So you got to be passionate about what you do. It's first thing. How many of you know who your ideal client is? Okay, we're gonna talk more about that today. Y'all, I didn't really know, I guess until probably about three years ago, really who my ideal client was until someone took me through an exercise. I was like, oh, that's who I like to work with. So I'm gonna share that exercise with you guys today. Um, we mastered communication. And again, that goes back into web tech and technology. We educate our clients and tell them exactly what we're gonna do and what the expectations are. And it's really funny. <laughs> You know, years ago, at 1 and 2 and 3 in the morning, seven days a week, clients would text me, and I would text them back. Like, how many of y'all still do that? I don't know. Like, I allowed it. And then I'm, like, angry at the client. And I'm like, but I never set any boundaries. Like, I never told them my office hours are this. So you've got to set boundaries up front. You've got to tell them what the expectations are. And then we're gonna, I'm going to go through the process, which we're completely paperless, and the experience, and of course, last but not least, technology. So my why and why I believe in helping others is in college, the last week that I was graduating from uh, my mental health job, um, because it started as an internship, my computer got a virus, and I had a PC. How many of y'all remember, like, the big towers? I know some of y'all remember. Um, and it got a virus, and I took it to the like computer doctor in Florida, and he's like, honey, you didn't back up with a floppy drive? I'm like, what the hell is a floppy drive? And I'm going to go learn what a floppy drive is. And that's how long ago that was. Um, but I very quickly learned. And then after floppy drives, like jump drives came out, and then um, all these little devices. So I became like the backup psycho queen. And so it's like I have hard drives and Carbonite and I, I back with iTunes and iCloud and Dropbox and Google Drive. But there's a reason to use all of them, and I'm going to go into that. Then a week later, oh, and by the way, I lost everything, <laughs> all my pictures, six months worth of <laughs> client slash sick patient data. And by the way, if I didn't turn that notebook in, I wasn't going to graduate on time. My professor didn't care. So I like stayed up three nights in a row, like producing six months worth of work. And I'm like, I'll never, ever feel this empty again and this depressed. And I just cried for three days. And I'm like, I need to check myself into the mental hospital that I work at. Like, how could this happen, <laughs> right? And, and I did work with a lot of um, like really, really successful CEOs that like one of our patients, his building burned down and he didn't back up either. And so he was suicidal because he lost everything. His wife left him. I mean, it's awful. Like, think about if you lose all your files, like, what do you do? So you can't leave this room today and say you didn't know. Because before this happened to me, like, I didn't know. Um, and then a week later, my car was broken into. <laughs> really, you know, it comes in threes, right? It's a really bad week. Um, and my purse was stolen. And my planner, how many of y'all have a planner? That's your Bible, right? It was stolen, and at the time, again, like, I'm in college. Like, I taught gymnastics, I taught aerobics, and I had my classes. I thought my life was super important. I didn't know, you know, 15 plus years later, I'd be managing millions of details and millions of dollars. So I feel like God did all this to me to set me up for success, like, way later. And everything does happen for a reason. So after my planner was stolen, I learned what an online calendar was, right? How many of you use your online calendar? Awesome, almost half of you. So today, it's okay to have your paper planner, but if you also use your electronic planner slash calendar, and you can have both, and the idea is to like wean yourself off of it. So I have classes called like potty train your brain, and so you like re-potty train your brain. And it's a whole new life, but it's so much easier, y'all. Um, and then I don't know, have any of y'all, I know some of y'all are from Nashville, but anybody else know about the flood in Nashville? Like five years ago? This was I-24, like this is not Photoshop, this is like freaking real, okay? So um, the, the month that this happened, we had eight events, 
And I was like, God, what are you doing to me? Like, why? Why are you doing this? Like, I was clearly re-evaluating my profession. But our town really pulled together. And what came out of this, and that's the street I grew up on as a little girl. I didn't lose anything, knock on wood. I didn't have a bad week. But a lot of my vendors had a horrible week, y'all. They lost everything. They lost all their equipment, their drapes, their trucks, everything. And they had no flood insurance because we were in a floodplain. And so some of them had to file bankruptcy. So it was a pretty tragic thing. Um, so the re the, then they came to me and they're like, okay, Angela, what's this drop thing? And what's this Google Drive? And all right, what is this paperless business? Because our files floated away. And they're like, we're not worried about your clients because everything's backed up. But we don't, they never understood the, the value of backing up. So the flood slash tragedy started a new business for me, which was becoming paperless and like teaching other businesses in our industry how important it is to back things up. Um, so, okay, number one, again, genuine passion. Like it really shines through. And you got to find out like how to relate to your clients. We're going to go more into that and don't compromise. Um, I, I can't say that enough. So it's funny, you can look at planners' pictures and because I never know like when a photographer is around or a camera is around. And so, uh, you know, I'm just doing my thing because we're working to make a client happy. And they're like, Angela, you're always smiling. Like in every single picture, like I'm making sure his pocket square is perfect. You know, everything has to be perfect. I stand up on chairs, I'm taking pictures, I'm on my knees. Like I don't care what I'm doing. Like I'm happy with what I'm doing. And so, if you feel like you're getting burnt out or you need a break, go back and look at your pictures and your video that you're in. And if you're not smiling, take a break. It's okay. Get help. Okay, so how many of you have done true colors? Just Brandy. Nobody else? Okay, this is going to be so much fun then. So did everybody get this? Who doesn't have this? Do you need one? In the back? You good? You need one? Okay, here. So... I know that the copy machine, you need one too. Y'all, this is the only piece of paper you will ever get from me. And, <laughs> um, and honestly, like, there's a little book that goes along with this, um, but they cost money, so <laughs> I just made a copy. Um, and I know the words are a little bit hard to see. The copier failed me, but I'll put it up on the board too. Who else needs it? So what we're going to do is I'm going to put your book on the cards up on the screen. <clears throat> and so I want to start off by saying like everyone has all four colors, everyone, but the numbers game, which is what you have right here, is going to dictate a few things and you're going to learn a little bit about you and then you're going to learn how to pre-qualify clients, which is what we do. And I do this on everybody. <laughs> vendors, pretty much I can colorize people without even them doing this test. So how many of you have an intake form on your website? Okay. Do you ask for their Pinterest ID? You may not, but can you use it? Anybody? All right. So on our pre-qualifying form, we ask these things. You have to put your name, your phone number, your email, and how can we help you? And then this, the rest of this is all optional, okay? So Pinterest ID, what's your date, how many guests, location, overall budget, they'll put 350 people, <laughs> overall budget $10,000, and then here they're like, I want a band, I want a full bar, a seated dinner, and I'm like, did you leave out a zero on your overall budget? <laughs> um, remember that, that's important, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, preferred communication. Do you want me to text you? Do you want me to email you? Do you want me to call you? What do you want? And when can you meet? And the people that put Saturday or Sunday, I love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, will, I don't know what day of the week it is half the time. I will meet you whatever time. I don't care. But you got to understand, we have to educate these people. Friday, Saturday, Sunday is like your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It, it, it truly is. So we have to educate these clients because they don't live in our world. Okay. So... Don't worry about the colors. Look at the pictures. Orange, blue, gold, green. How many of you, just as you glance at it, the orange pictures jump out at you first? 
Nobody? One, two, three, three. Okay. How many blues? Every time in our industry, y'all, half the room is blue. You'll understand in a minute. Um, gold? I know Brandy's gold. Is anybody else gold? Nobody? Nobody gold. Okay, green? Inquisitive? Okay, one. All right, so this is how we pre-qualify our clients based on personality. And some people can say this is hokey on some of the feedback I get. It's hilarious. They're like, I don't believe in that. I'm like, well, that's funny because I've been doing this for 15 years. And in mental health, we did 32 assessments on our patients. And this was the only psychological test that patients loved. And they actually would like open up to me. And I think the main reason is because you really don't have to be able to read. And when you're mentally ill or if you have suffered tragedy, try giving somebody a Myers-Briggs test and be like, read it and tell me how you feel. Like, it's just kind of a joke. So this allowed me, just by people looking at the pictures, to really open up and I could understand a little bit, you know, where they're coming from so I can help them. Um, and some people you just can't help. So, because they don't want to be helped. So true color spectrum. So this is the card sort. So for those of you at the very, very top that raised your hand for orange first, put a four at the very top of the little piece of paper I gave you. Put a four underneath the orange. And for those of you, nobody had gold, so there's no four golds in here. Blue, half of you had blue, so put a four under blue. And then one of you had green, put a four. And then the pictures that are next, so we're gonna go four, three, two, one. So basically what I do next is say, okay, which card is nothing like me, does not interest me at all, put a one. <laughs> and then fill in the three and the two. Does that make sense? So you're, you're on the top row, so you should have four is the most like you, one is the least like you. Everybody got it? Um, like red. Oh, orange? No, red. <laughs> oh, there's no red in this test. Oh, well, then that, that's another <laughs> test. But um, there is, a, I don't know what that one's called. So True Colors is, a, is part of like Myers-Briggs and then something this guy, Dan Kersey, made up. Um, but there is a red, but that's in a different test. Um, oh, oh, so let me go back. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. And you're going to look at the word group going across horizontally and do the same thing, four, three, two, one. So pick the group of words that is most like you and then least like you, and then fill in one, two, three, four. So the first line, and again, you're going horizontal, active, optimistic, spontaneous, parental, traditional, responsible, authentic, harmonious, compassionate, <laughs> versatile. God, I can't even read. Competent. So whichever group of words is most like you, put a four. And then the next group of words, three, two, and one. So you're gonna to wanna to go down and do that for all of the lines. And then when you get to the very bottom, don't add it up yet. We'll do that together. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to do that. And then we'll figure out what your numbers are. Yes? No, ma'am. It is the, um, the pictures. Yeah. I have people, they're like, I hate orange. I'm like, it's not about the color. Just look at the pictures. So I'll, I'll leave the pictures up here. Um, but can y'all see the words? Like, I cannot read the words on the copier, whatever the copier did. If you have questions, raise your hand.
have any more time? Two more minutes? Okay. <clears throat> So if you're done, if you look up here, you're going to add the numbers vertically. Make sure you include the top number. And then when you add these across, you should get 60. And it is okay to pull your phone out and add it on your phone because that's what I would do. I don't pretend to add in my head. How many has 60? Yay, something you got there. All right, let's start with orange. So how many of you, your highest number was orange? Two, three? You were tied. So when you look at one, just visually, do you feel drawn to one more than the other? Okay, so that means something. We're gonna go over that. So, were, you, were any of you 20, above 20? 20? What was your highest for orange? 20. 20? 17. 17, okay. What month were you born? November. Okay, September, come up. Come on up. <laughs> so, all right, so this mic is working. So, if you'll read this aloud to everyone. Now, Real, real quick, let me ask, how many of you, your lowest, palest, not lowest, palest color is orange? Okay, so listen up, okay, because this is how orange people think. Go ahead. <laughs> and j I'm like 40s orange, you guys. <laughs> Am I starting here? At the very top. Oh, at the very All top. Uh -huh. I act on a moment's notice. Yeah. Okay. Witty, charming, spontaneous. I consider life as a game here and now. Impulsive, generous, impactful. I need fun, variety, stimulation, and excitement. Optimistic, eager, bold. I value skill, resourcefulness, and courage. Physical, immediate, fraternal. I am a natural troubleshooter, a performer, and a competitor. At work, I am bored and restless with jobs that are routine and structured and satisfied in careers that allow me independence and freedom while using my physical coordination and my love of tools. I view any kind of tool as an extension of self. I am a natural performer. In relationships, I seek relationship with shared activities and interest. With my mate, I like to explore new ways to energize the relationship. As a lover, I need to be bold. I thrive on physical contact. I believe in leaving plans flexible so I can choose what to do when the moment arrives. In childhood, of all types of children, 
I had the most difficult time fitting into an academic routine. I learned by doing and experiencing rather than by listening and reading. I needed physical involvement in the learning process and was motivated by my own natural competitive nature and sense of fun. Does that sound like you? Pretty close. Yeah. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Yeah. So for those of you who are orange, does it describe you? A little bit? A little bit? So oranges in work, um, these are like the creatives, the marketers. Um, I'm very high orange, so I walk into an empty room like this, and then I ask my client, like, give me three adjectives to describe your party. And based on what they say, will dictate how I need to help them spend their money. So if they say something about fun, then I'm going to ask them about music, because usually the entertainment is what's driving the fun. If they say, I just, I want a wow factor. Yeah, so then we need to create levels of like the ceremony, the cocktail hour, the dinner, the dancing, and have different things happening and coming down from the ceiling because <laughs> they value that wow factor. Um, and then if people are like, I just want really good food, well then I'm going to take them to a certain caterer that I know they can afford versus a, a different caterer. Now, if they don't say anything about food or wow factor, I know like they're probably not going to want over the top flowers. They probably don't care about drape. We're having lighting for a good photo video. I don't care if you like it or not. <laughs> um, but you can really tell a lot about someone. But if you're a high gold and you walk into a room and you ask a client that, you probably wouldn't be able to see what I see because our brains are wild, wired differently and that's okay. Um, in childhood, these are the kids that get labeled as ADD or ADHD, which some kids are, but it doesn't mean you're actually ADD. Like, I didn't like reading and I, I didn't like to sit into a class and learn. Like, I wanted to do it. Every time I could do an internship or an externship in college to get hours, I did it because I learned by doing. I don't learn by reading. I love audiobooks when I'm driving, but I don't like to read because I'm not retaining, I'm not learning anything. Okay, the next one. Well, these are at attributes of orange. Again, you guys can look in the Dropbox for this. The most important for each of the colors though is reframing because if you don't understand these colors, it's really hard to relate to these people. So like I constantly have to change hats and how I say things which I'll go back and give an example in just a few minutes. But others who are not orange, they think like really high golds, they think us oranges, we're goofing off too much, we're untrustworthy, we're manipulative, we're scattered, we're obnoxious, we're immature, we're self-centered. But then the oranges perceive themselves like we're flexible, we're easygoing, we have a playful attitude, like we're open to change, like, Oh, it's raining, no big deal. Like, I already have a backup plan. It is not a big deal, people. Like, chill out. Um, I would never take a gold bride or groom and allow them to have an outdoor wedding, ever. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't do it. Um, they, we value our freedom. So we don't put a, do not put a high orange in a cubicle. Oh my God, I'd rather jump on the bridge. Um, they have to do different things every day. Uh, that we're bold, assertive, fun-loving, and really independent. Um, okay, gold. The you, oh, we have a gold. You're the highest gold. So you're the winner. Come on up. <laughs> no competition here. Now, if Allison was in here, Allison works with me. She's a very high gold. I was only, like, 18 on gold. But that was your highest number. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> You'll read it out loud for us. Okay. I follow the rules and respect authority, loyal, dependable, prepared. I have a strong sense of what is right and wrong in life, thorough, sensible, punctual. I need to be useful and to belong, faithful, stable, organized. I value home, family, and tradition, caring, concerned, and concrete. I am a natural preserver, a good citizen, and helpful. At work, I provide stability and can maintain organization. My ability to handle details and to work hard may make me the backbone of many organizations. I believe that work comes before play, even if I must work overtime to complete the job. 
In relationships, I am serious and tend to have traditional conservative views of both love and marriage. I want a mate who can work along with me, building a secure, predictable life together. I demonstrate love and affection through the practical things I do for my loved ones. In childhood, I wanted to follow the rules and regulations of the school. I understood and respected authority and was comfortable with academic routine. I was the easiest of all types of children to adapt to the educational system. Is that you? Most of it, yeah. Most of it. All right, thanks. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. So now I can share stories with you guys. So in work, um, the oh, sorry, it went off on a tangent. Let me finish orange. So your orange clients, they are not going to fill out a form. They're not going to follow directions. They don't understand the word deadline. Um, and these are my clients, 100%. Like. If you're not orange, probably not my client. Because they need us most. They need us school people to help with deadlines, help make decisions, but you know, in a nice, caring, blue way, right? Um, so these people come in and they don't have a notebook. They don't have, you know, I ask them the adjectives. They're like, here's some money, make it fun. I'm like, time out. Like, I need to ask you some questions. This is not my wedding, this is your wedding. <laughs> and it's like really hard to keep them focused. So like on design days and, and final vendor meetings, my gold people in the room are like coming out of their skin because it's like there's 15 conversations going on. And because I worked in mental health, like I can actually listen to all of them and like pick it up a little bit from each. Um, okay, so gold's totally different. So in business, these are the people that you do want running your business and helping you. So if you're that hot orange, which I learned this about myself a long time ago, as soon as I could afford somebody who was a high gold to take care of the things that I, A, did not want to do, B, did not like to do, and C, did not, again, want to do, um, to find somebody who was really, really good at that and loved doing it, and then were much happier. So, like, I would rather live in a cardboard box and walk to work than get rid of my gold girl because she's my right hand and we balance each other out. And so she's like, focus, are you listening to me? Or are you listening? Like, did you just hear what I said to you? And people are like, oh my God, I can't believe she talks to you like that. But she knows I'm super hot orange and I'm looking at you, but I'm not listening because I'm thinking about something else. Um, but these are the best like CEOs. If you ask them to open your shop, like a bakery, if you have a tasting at 5 p.m., they're gonna be there at 4.45 to open, turn the music on, make sure the lighting's perfect. These are the people that are running the events for me and I can count on them and they are accountable and they would never let me down ever. And if something happened, like they cry, they fret. Like one day Allison accidentally left these poppers like for a fun exit. She could have gone back home at like nine o'clock while everyone's getting drunk, but she wanted to get them at 7 a.m. and she used to be there at 7.30. She's running down the steps and falls and like her, all her knee like busts open and like poppers go everywhere and she calls me from the car. I'm still asleep because I took the late night the rehearsal dinner and then she was taking the early morning. She's an early bird. I'm not, you know, so again, we balance each other out and she called me and she's as calm as a cucumber and she's like, I'm headed to the ER because I fell and I'm late. And so it's like when gold people are late, like they like sweat and like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. So I'm like jumping out of bed. I'm like, no shower for me this morning, no breakfast. You know, I'm rushing straight to the venue and I'm like, go home. So she's like on all these drug, drugs, pain pills, probably should have dr driven, comes to the wedding and works the whole 17 hour day with stitches. That's a gold person. I wouldn't have done that, sorry. Not on pain drugs, whatever. Um, so the brides and the grooms and the couples that are gold, back to the little pre-qualifying form, they fill out everything. And if they don't know, they put TBD or NA for not applicable. Um, they come into my office with a notebook and it is color coded. It's in alphabetical order. They have other contracts, they're organized. And then I'm like, what if that notebook is Stolen? Um, is your guest list in there? Oh yes, it's in alphabetical order. Is it in a Google Doc? 
or is it in Dropbox or is it backed up? And they just kind of look at me with a blank stare. And I'm like, your notebook is amazing, but I'm gonna build you an online notebook. And I'm gonna share it with you and you're gonna have access and control to everything. Because the way that their brain is wired, they need to be in control. These are the poor people that get labeled as bridezillas. They're not bridezillas in my eyes. They are accountable. And that's how God made them. And they like to be in charge. So if you ask a goal to do something, like I'll ask some of my goal girls, I'm like, put these place cards and escort cards in order, order put the menu cards, you know, buy chicken, fish, whatever, the seat numbers. Um, you know, make sure that you put the bows perfectly around the chargers and cinch them in the middle. And oh, by the way, there's four different color ribbons for four different kinds of linens. Like, I can trust them and walk away. And if somebody else comes up like an intern and says, can I help you with that? They're like, no, I got it. You go out to the club and have fun and I'm gonna stay here and work because I know how to do it the way that Angela asked me to do it. And so sometimes with gold people, opposites attract, right? So these two colors are like magnets because these people need fun and these people need order. So the funniest story of my favorite couple that walked into my office, because again, I do this with all my clients. And, and it really makes it more fun because when the opposites do attract, um, if, if there's an argument or tension, I'm like, he's really great. Like, it's okay, remember? And they're like, oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. Like, it's okay. So this bride and groom met at a bar. This girl was not going, does not hang out at bars. She's CEO of a heart hospital, but her friends drug her out. Um, this guy's always at the bar. <laughs> and they meet, they exchange numbers, they hang out all night. They both go home to their roommates and are like, I met this amazing person. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to hang out on Thursday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday goes by. No conversation. Wednesday night, he texts her and says, what do you want to do tomorrow? And she tells her roommate, she's like, hell no. Like, I'm not going. Like, I need to get my hair done, my nails done, I need to shop for a new outfit. Like, why is he asking me what I want to do? And why is he waiting till the last minute? And she's like, just go, like, chill out. So she went, they had a great time. At the end of the day, he's like, you want to hang out again? And she pulls out her phone, you know, with her calendar and she's like scrolling. She's like, okay, how about this? And he's like, that's like three weeks away. She's like, I'm busy. Like, I, I run a hospital, a heart group of like 49 doctors. This is why I'm not married and I don't have can't really have time for that. And he's like, she's waiting for him to like pull out his calendar. <laughs> and she's like, he's like, why don't you just let me know when we can hang out? Because he doesn't keep a calendar. Um, and so when I did this with them, they immediately were like, he's like, oh my God, you're so gold. And then she like goes to the bathroom. And he's like, so I shouldn't plan a surprise honeymoon, right? I'm like, oh dear God, no, like no. <laughs> And then, but like for his 40th birthday party, she's like, I should plan a surprise party. I'm like, absolutely. So it's like they, just because of this silly, stupid little test, like they automatically like understood each other and they can respect one another in the way that their brain is wired. I love to tell stories because these are like real life things that happen to me. Um, so reframing, how many of you, your palest color is gold? Mine is. Just one. So others perceive gold as inflexible, rigid, bossy, too serious, opinionated systems. They're boring, they're uptight, they're predictable. Gold see themselves as being very consistent. They're structured, they're goal oriented. They're very loyal to the organization. They're realistic, they're dependable. They like to follow a routine and they like being a leader. So sometimes I have to remind my girls, like, flexibility is okay. Like, it's okay if a client texts and says they're running 20 minutes late. Like, that's okay. We can get 20 emails done during that time. But this happened to me yesterday, and it made me get here at 1 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> almost last night. And um, my client was 20 minutes late, and Allison's like, that's going to throw the entire schedule off. And, like, I'm not thinking, <laughs> like, we'll catch up. Like, let's answer some emails. It's okay. But that's just how their brain is naturally wired. She's like, we're gonna get in traffic and we have to drive to Memphis. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, we're gonna be together. We have each other to like get 
worked on in the car. Like, it's no big deal. Um, so that you never know what's going on in people's brains until you can colorize them. We talk in code in the office. Um, everybody in our office understands the colors now. All right, 20 blue. 20? 25? 24? 24? All right, come on up. <laughs> you win! I'm surprised we didn't have more ties with blue. Is this making sense to you guys, though? Okay, I mean, again, it's a little cheesy, but it works. It's what I base my whole business around. I need to feel unique and authentic, enthusiastic, <clears throat> sympathetic, personal. I look for meaning and significance in life. Warm, communicative, compassionate. I need to contribute, to encourage, and to care. Idealistic, spiritual, sincere. I value integrity and unity in relationships. Peaceful, flexible, imaginative. I am a natural romantic, a poet, and a nurturer. At work, I have a strong desire to influence others so they lead more significant lives. I often work in the arts, communications, education, and the helping professions. I am adept at motivating and interacting with others. In relationships, I seek harmonious relationships and believe in true love. I am a romantic and cherish the small gestures of love. I am affectionate, supportive, and a good listener. I enjoy doing thoughtful things for others. I bring drama. <laughs> in a good way. Warmth and empathy to relationships. In childhood, I was imaginative and creative. I flourished with encouragement rather than competition. I wanted others to like me. I react with great sensitivity to discord discordance or rejection and sought recognition. I respond best to my teachers who were warm and friendly. Awesome. Does it sound like half of you in the room? Give her a round of applause. Thank you. So with Blue at work, these are the people that I'm like, hey, can you go to Starbucks for everybody? Like all 20, 30 of us and um, take the orders and it's, you know, obnoxious, like completely obnoxious. Like, um, two Splendas, soy, no water, you know, it's just ridiculous. But on wedding days, my blue people, they're carrying the bride's train. They're like, can I get you, do you want Advil? Or you don't like Advil? You, are you, do you want a leave? Are you allergic to naproxen? Um, or do you want, to, like, you know, I've got 15 different kinds of medication. Oh, you want Sprite, not Sierra Mist? Like, let me drive two hours to go get you an RC Cola instead of a Coke. Like, these are people that genuinely want people to be happy. And our industry sells perfect happiness, right? Because that's what it's supposed to be. So the blue people are the people that are there to make sure everybody has what they need to a point. So again, these are your people in customer service. They're gonna listen. They're gonna say, I'm sorry, a hundred times, and they're gonna mean it. Um, these are the people that at work, they're like, you don't look good. Do you not feel good today? And I'm like, allergies, the aller, like I cannot breathe. And like in two hours, I'll have like Flonase, an inhaler, Zyrtec, Claritin. They don't know me very well because I travel with the pharmacy. <laughs> But it's like they're very genuine and they just want to take care of people. And so blue people get labeled as being very sensitive. Why are they crying? Like, why do they cry so much? Y'all, blue brides and, and some blue grooms, they cannot make a decision to save their life. Like, I have to make or talk them into making a decision. So it's like when you have a gold mom and a really blue bride and the mom goes to the bathroom, I'm like, tell me what you really want. <laughs> now, like, what's important to you? <laughs> so the welcome boxes, because I, you know, I live in Nashville and we do a ton of destination weddings too. So I always know my blue brides because their welcome box budget is crazy. I'm like, uh, that's like $150 room. Do you really want to spend that? It's okay. It's okay. I'll, find, I'll, I'll get a fourth job. And I'm not kidding. And they like write handwritten notes. It's like, you know, you could just write that once. I'm like, I can have that printed and no one will know ever that you did not handwrite it. <laughs> really? Um, you know, because I'm just about productivity. 
So, the, but the blue people really, really care. And you've got to know that about people. And when they walk into my office, I'm going to go back to Pinterest in a minute, but like they hug you at the beginning. They hug you during the meeting. Sometimes they hug you at the end of the meeting. You know, it's like they need that sensitivity. So there's some blue brides who don't have a mom or their, their mom's not really in their life that much. So then Allison and I become their mom, which sometimes is not good. Um, <laughs> But I know that they have that hole that needs to be filled. And I know that my blue needs to come out and I need to be more blue than another color. And I'll tell you a funny story in a minute about blues and greens because for some reason, those are the two that attract each other. So anybody in here, who's your, your palest color is blue? Okay, so, um, Others perceive blue, so this is probably how you see blue, very emotional, and this is how I see blue too, until I, you know, learn about this. They're easily, my mother, oh my God, she's like 60 blue. I'm like, mama, like stop, like, let's practice. No. <laughs> Ready? No. I mean, I'm serious, like, it's so bad. Um, but there, she asks a million questions and she's so smothering. But she just cares too much. She's like texting me last night. And she's like, did you make it? I'm like, why are you not asleep? You have to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go to work. Um, but there, some people see them as weak and illogical and they're mushy and they're oversensitive and they're too emotional. But blues, they have feelings, they're compassionate, they're romantic, they're empathetic, they care, they're nurturing. And these are a lot of nurses and you know, people that are in our industry. They, they're good communicators and they value feelings. So without really blue people, we would not care. And that's half of our industry is blue. And that's another reason why a lot of us that are high blues that are business owners have a hard time making money. And if you don't hear me say anything else today, hear this, hire or contract out a gold person or a green person to get your money. And you will be profitable. That's what I did. It will change your life. It will change your business. If you are high blue and you're trying to ask clients for money, it will never work. Ever. Trust me. I know for seven years. Seven. All right. Green. Who's our highest green? 20? Anybody 20? You were 20? Right? Okay. What, you said you were high green earlier. What was your highest number? Oh. So are you blue green? What was yours? 22. 22 green? And you were 20? Oh, you win. Come up. I wish I had a car to give away. You know, did y'all did y'all watch Oprah where it's like, you get a car and you get a car? It's like so fun. Take green for us. Are you in research? Are you here to research for your wife? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm uh she just hired me, so awesome. Smart lady. Can you see? It's the same up there. Uh-huh. It is. <laughs> I seek knowledge and understanding, analytical, global, conceptual. Uh, I, live, I live life by my own standards, cool, calm, collected. I need explanations and answers. I'm inventive, logical, perfectionist. Uh, I value intelligence, insight, fairness, and justice. Abstract, hypothetical, investigative. I'm a natural nonconformist, a visionary, and a problem solver. <clears throat> At work, I am conceptual and an independent thinker. For me, work is play. I'm drawn to constant challenges in career, challenge in careers, and if see, oh, skip that, careers, and, and like to, to develop models, explore ideas, or build systems to satisfy my need to deal with the innovative, once I have perfected an idea, I prefer to move on, leaving the project to be maintained and supported by others. In relationships, I prefer to let my head rule my heart. I dislike repetition, so it is difficult for me to continuously express feelings. I believe that once feelings are stated, they're obvious to a partner. I am uneasy when my emotions control me. I want to establish a relationship, leave it to maintain itself, and turn my energies back into my career. Uh, 
It doesn't sound so good, but yes. This is, this is, <laughs> in, in, in childhood, I appeared to be older than my years. I was focused on my greatest interest and achieved more in subjects that were mentally stimulating. I was impatient with drill and routine. I questioned authority. I found it necessary to respect. I found it necessary to respect teachers before I could learn from them. Does that sound a little bit like you? Yeah, All right, give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Does that sound like you a little bit? You were high green? So, story. These two, green and blues, opposite the track. These are true stories, y'all. So in my office, the groom is late because he's working. And the bride's like, I'm so sorry he's late. I'm just so sorry. I'm like, it is no big deal. It's okay. And I already knew it was green. Um, I hadn't met him yet. You can just kind of tell with the dynamic of the relationship. And so he walks in, and you know, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, no, actually, I don't think he says he's sorry. Green's a little, I'll say this sorry very much. Um, he's like, she's like, did you have lunch today? He's like, why? She's like, did you eat your lunch? Did you eat your lunch today? And he's like, no, I had 13 meetings. Like, no, I didn't eat my lunch. Why? She's like, well, I made you lunch. And he's like, I know, but I didn't have time to eat it. And so she's like, well, I wrote like on a post-it note, like, I love you, have a good day. And he's like, y'all, I'm not even making this up. He's like, I told you I loved you when I proposed, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, she's about to start crying. <laughs> and then I'm like, hold on, like let me do this exercise with you guys. And so I'm like recovering. And um, like she, this is why people in the workplace though cheat on their spouses because they don't understand how their brains work. And blue people who meet blue people at work and then they're like, oh, he gets me, she gets me. And the green people, the green people though, like, they love research and they love analytics. Like if you, if you ever want to open up another company or a bakery or in another city or another country, hire a green person to do your analytics and your research because they will research to death. And in business, my operations vendors are very green and I appreciate them so much because if I, didn't have them, my events would probably be a shit show. <laughs> because they ask, they ask a lot of questions. So I'm like, I want these chandeliers and I want this to do this and the lights to come on and do this. And they're like, okay, time out. So we have this kind of tent. How much weight can it hold? I'm like, I don't care, figure it out. Ask someone else. Just tell me how much it's gonna cost. And then they're like, wait, so okay, we need generators and we need this and we need that. So how many people are in the van and like what kind of food? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, ask the band, ask the caterer, I don't know, find out who needs power. I don't care. But, like, we know that about each other now. And so it has a much better vendor relationship where I don't, it doesn't get on my nerves at all. I'm like, ask me as many questions as you need to. Let's pre-qualify all the stuff up front so that when it comes week of, everything is perfect. And so this is how I really value the people in the company. And it really takes all four colors to make your company Whole. And when you're missing a color, you can tell. And people can tell. I can tell. Um, also, green people don't hire planners, typically, because they love to research and they think they can get everything on the internet they need. But every once in a while, they get really busy because they work a lot and they do hire a planner after they've already made a hundred mistakes. And um, they want to look at, they go through every single quote and drop box and they're like, why do we need salt and pepper shakers that are $1.99 when I can go to Kroger and get them for 99 cents? I'm like, okay, patience. I'm like, well, you're having a dinner and a wedding, it's $250,000. And so we're going to have crystal, we're going to have crystal salt and pepper shakers and it's going to be pretty, we're not going to have paper. Do you have any other questions about the rental quote? Well, our RSVPs aren't in yet, and we think we're going to have 153 people, and why do you have 175 plates? And why do you have 352? What is a B&B &B plate? Y'all, like, I have to explain. For my orange people, they don't even look at a quote. They just trust because they trust what we do. So I don't typically work with green people because I don't have the patience. Like, I just I can't do it anymore. 
Um, and that's okay. Like we're not for everybody, right? And this is where the client avatar comes in. So, reframing, how many of you, your lowest color is green? Yeah. So, we, because I'm very low green, I used to think greens were like arrogant, they're cold, they're, they know it all, like they won't open up, they're argumentative. These are like your attorneys, your accountants, a lot of doctors. Um, but greens, they're very confident, they're mentally tough, they're strong, they're logical, they're self-controlled, they're good at analysis, they're objective, they're very knowledgeable, they like use big words, they're really smart, smart people. And without green people, like researching things, our events would not be what they are. So again, on the business side, love my green people. And again, everyone has all four colors. So how many of you were like 15, 15, 16, 17, like very... So for those of you who are like that number wise, what that means is you really can change hats like that and you're good with any color. You, you really, you're good. Um, but if you are a really high and really low, like I'm a really high orange and a really low green gold, um, you gotta know that about yourself. And you've gotta be able to take yourself out of you and put yourself and talk the language to whatever color you're talking to. So the way I know it is going back to the pre-qualifying form back here and going back to the Pinterest ID. When people don't fill in the Pinterest ID, which it's not a, you don't have to do it. Like you don't have to start because we have orange clients mainly. They're like, huh? I don't have a Pinterest, that's why I'm hiring you. But it's so helpful when I can see their Pinterest because when they fill that in, the, again, a lot of oranges don't do it. Um, but the gold people, they, their Pinterest boards are so well organized. It's like dresses, cakes, flowers. Yeah, you know, they're very organized. And so before I ever even meet them, I know going into it that if I told them our meeting is from 9 to 10, I better be early and we better end at 10. And if I tell them I'll have a contract to them today, by the end of the day at five, and I don't send it, I've lost all their trust. I can forget it. So our email system tells us when people actually open their email, and Allison will go and look, and if they haven't opened, she'll call or text or make sure that they got it. Um, so, no, where's, okay, here it is. The blue people, they will fill everything out because I asked them to, right? And then on their Pinterest, they'll have like lots of love quotes and puppies and couples walking on the beach, like life is perfect. They'll have like poetry, um, just a lot of like sensitive things. And then um, the orange people that do have a Pinterest though, there's no folders. There's like 3,763 pictures and they don't make sense at all. And that's my favorite client because I'm like, they want to, fun experience, and that's all they really care about, usually, is the experience. And greens, when they do have a Pinterest, it's not very detailed. They might, like yesterday, one of the moms, she's like, I started a Pinterest. I'm like, okay, well, what is it? There's eight pictures. <laughs> eight. <laughs> Give me some more information. Thank God you're not good. Um, but knowing does this help like knowing the colors and like looking at the pinterest like it really really helps and then at the end of the meeting people are like you know exactly what i want like how do you know and i'm like oh god this is not hard <laughs> and like the gold people like they're usually very traditional and so like we do we like to do fun unique floor plans and so some of them are a little bit edgy but like I would never go into a gold, a high gold, and say we're gonna have like aerial people coming down from the ceiling, serving champagne. Like their brain just can't do that. They're like, huh? And then if I'm telling a green person that, they're like, well, what's the weight limit? And what kind of chain do you use? And and then the orange people are like, that sounds awesome. And the gold people are like, how much does that cost? You know, so it's like. Being able to read what people are asking.
asking, and I spent so much time on the communication piece, which is like number three in the recipe, um, because this is everything. If you can communicate and read your clients, you're good. Everything else should be easy. All right. Oh, sorry. Two. That was two. <laughs> Ingredient three, communicate the journey. So again, we over communicate. So this says share and back up your files. How many, okay, how many of you for real back your files up? Like tell the truth. Okay, so maybe like a third of you. So I hope that those of you who don't back up your files, like come back at 4, 4 or 4, 15. So we talk about it more. But this guy says, my computer doesn't work. The hard drive crashed, what do I do? And the person on the phone says, did you back up? You know, he's like backing up and he's like, is it gonna blow up? You know, so it's like, he doesn't understand. He doesn't. And so this is how brides and grooms, like these people, they don't live in our world. So we can't assume that they know what we're talking about, right? Uh, so these are my favorite apps. We're gonna talk more about apps in a little bit. These are free. Every client that hires us, I'm like, give me your phone, give me your phone. <laughs> we're gonna put Dropbox, Google Drive, and Sign Easy. Or some of my clients, like if they're in real estate or there's a few other industries, they use DocuSign, HelloSign, they already have like the app for contracts. We don't do paper contracts. We'll email you contracts, but you're gonna sign it with your finger and email it right back. Or I'm gonna teach you how to name it and label it and put it in your Dropbox even better. Now I do that for the gold people, the orange people. <laughs> we have them sign everything in our office. Or in our contract, I'm like, you can sign on that bottom line that just gives us the right to sign your name to everything. And legally, you know, we're responsible. But you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Legally. So these are the three apps mainly that help us stay paperless. Now, for those of you who are planners or designers, can you really put in a one sheet what we do? No, no, but hell no. Like, no, like, well, how much is my wedding gonna cost? I'm like, I've never, I don't know anything about you. I don't know what's important to you. I don't know what your priorities are. I don't have a crystal ball, but if I did, I would not be doing this. And I'd like own an island. So, and living there. But that's an impossible question. So I, we kind of do, th some people, parents especially, they're like, this is backwards. Like you don't build a budget for us until we shop? I'm like, so are you gonna go buy your dress based off the price tag, what you see online? No, you're gonna go try it on and make sure you like it. And if you like the $10,000 dress more than the $2,000 dress because the fabric is a much better quality, what are you gonna do? You're gonna find a way usually to get the more expensive dress because it's better quality. So I try to educate people through that process. And then again, going back to the form, you can't judge people based off of what they put in the overall budget because they don't know. So this is how you pre-qualify. Allison will call and say, I'm following up. I noticed in your form you put for your overall budget. Now, let me back up. You want 350 people to sit down dinner at the Country Music Hall of Fame in downtown Nashville. You want a band, a full bar. Um, so in your, the over, going back to the overall budget, was $10,000 for your planner? Or did you mean for your overall wedding? And there's very A or B. Oh, my parents gave me $10,000 and that is all I can spend. That is not our client. And so she'll say, you know, you might wanna do a few things. Look at your guest count, look at your zip code, and look at your expectations. Because we don't have wands like Harry Potter. So um, good luck. And then the other, the B, they're like, oh, well, we just, I mean, we can spend more. Like, $10,000 enough? They don't know what they don't know. So that's totally our client. We get them in the office. We're like, let me educate you on what things cost. And if they're gold or green, it, it, just a little bit, they've already done a little bit of research to know that what they're asking for is insane. Like, it doesn't exist. It just doesn't. So it's funny because some of our clients that literally they put their budget is ten thousand dollars, they will end up spending two and three hundred thousand dollars because they just didn't know. 
So you can't go off of money and pre-qualify people. You, you, just, you can't. Um, I'm living proof of it. So when people ask me, like, what do, you, what do you do? What can you do for me? It's not about what I can do for you. It's about how I can help you and educate you through the process. So I can plan. I can design. I can just consult with you. I, that, I can just give you advice. We can do logistics and the execution. So those are the five things, and then we walk them through our process. I'm like, you're going to see me four times. We're going to do a design day, a priority meeting, which I don't call it budget. I call it priority because everybody's priorities are different. And then we're going to do a mock table and a tasting so you can get an idea of what things are going to look like. And this is not optional anymore because I've had some people that are like, that's pink? I'm like, well, what's your pink? They're like, this picture. I'm like, that is Photoshop with a filter. Like, come on, that's not, that's not real pink, especially in this month. So you've got to set people's expectations. And then we tell them, we charge hourly, we track our time. How many of you track your time? <clears throat> Two. People track your time, it will change your life. I had a mentor years ago. He's like, what is the deal with like these packages? And like I have mentors that are not in our industry. It's the best thing that I ever did because it, they t all the emotion is gone. And to run, run a profitable business, you've got to take the emotion away. And, and again, get somebody else who's not blue to run your money. And get your money for you. Oh my God, that's my alarm. I have 10 minutes. Um, so I tracked my time for a whole year. Whole year. I, I didn't tell anybody. I just did what he said. And then we sat down, you know, and the whole annual thing with the accountant and the business manager and all that. And he's like, do you, know, do you want to know how many weddings you did last year for free? Like basically not for free, but you paid them to do their wedding because you didn't charge appropriately. You didn't, like I have to pay people. I have overhead, I have an office. We drive to work, we have computers, I have a cell phone, I have to put gas in my car. Like those of us who work at home, we're like, oh, we don't have any overhead bullshit. We all have overhead people. Your time is valuable, it's very valuable. And I didn't understand that until he's like, you, had, you did 100 weddings and you had 30, but you actually made some money. And it's like, oh, you know, knife and the heart kind of thing. I'm like, okay, so we got to change some things. So the first few people I met with, they're like, you're like an attorney. You charge hourly? And the first three people said, no, like, I'm not doing that. Like, I, I only want to spend this much money on a planner. Y'all, I cried. I'm not a crier at all. And then I went back to my mentor, and at our closing rate when I meet with people is 100%. If I can meet with you and educate you, we're good. So when people say no, like, that hurts. And he's like, you got to keep trying, honey. You're never going to make any money. You might as well go get a job. Go back to health care. Why are you doing this? And so the fourth one said yes, and then the fifth one, and then the sixth one. That was almost four years ago. So the next year I did it, I did the least amount of weddings and made more money than those eight years. And people didn't change their mind. And people stopped texting at two in the morning. And my life changed. I could go to the gym, I could work out, I could spend time with my family. I like got my calendar together. And I'm like, okay, this is what boundaries. Okay, boundaries, okay, good. And so it's amazing, like, the little bitty changes that you make. And y'all had every excuse in the book. I'm like, I can't do that. Like, no one in this industry, like, does that. And, like, but I, I love shopping for people. And, like, it's fun. And, like, I don't want to keep up with my hours. It is, like, nails on a chalkboard. But now, the first of every month, I love it because I know how much we're going to make that month. And that's important. When you're running a business and don't rely on your partner or your husband or wife, for money. When you're running a business, it is your business and you gotta take ownership of it. Oh, why isn't this going? Okay, have y'all seen this? I don't need a wedding planner. All my pins and crafts and fantasies will just magically fall in place when I get my makeup done. Um, so again, I educate people. Like, yes, this is fun. I love what I do every day. And it's so rewarding, but I own a business, and I have overhead, and I have employees, and I pay taxes. And what do you do? You're a dentist? Okay. I don't care what my people do, to be honest. I don't care who you are. But you, you do something to make money, okay? 
So you have to pay for the toothpaste, you have to pay for the equipment, you have to pay for the plastic that goes in the equipment, you gotta pay your people. And just because I'm having fun and I love my career does not mean you can run all over me and not pay me. My favorite is when people like look at us as a service instead of a product and they're like, I owe this much. And I'm like, oh, okay, you drive a BMW. Now, okay, but did you go get your brakes done? And like, you know how when you get your brakes or your tires done, there's like all those charges of labor this, tighten this, turn this upside down, fill this. I'm like, do you go back to the like automotive department and question them? No. And you're not gonna drive your car away until you pay, right? It's like stealing. It's like when you want clothes, you pay for them. They take the security tag off. And just because we're a service, our time is valuable. So you've got to make people understand that. And again, it's all about education. Um, how many of you have a promo? Video promo. One, two. Guys, this is the number one tool, free. Well, not free, there's a great ROI on it. I budget about $15,000 a year in our marketing budget to make sure that at the end of every year, we have a promo and we have a video. And there are people that call and say, I saw your video and I don't know how much you cost, but I want you to do my wedding. And that's the best sales tool because they can see what I do. And I'm running out of time, so y'all can go online and watch this. But, the audio is not that great. But anyway, we capture audio is really important. This first part's important. So this basically shows people like walking into their party, their first look of their party. And I don't know what's going on with the audio, but basically like these are real moments that like are not fake. You cannot recreate this. Like every time I watch it, it gives me chills. Now. I plan for this. I talk to the video people. I talk to the photo people. Oh. I'm like overly anal. I'm like, okay, you got the audio. Like I even bought my own audio pen, which I don't use pen and paper, but it creates, like it captures audio because that's important to me. Like someone taught me years ago how the strategy, like this guy wrote me into his toast, which is kind of weird, um, but like called me and was like pouring at their wedding and like, it was just so sweet. So it's like, you know, take people through what you offer, right? I'm not going to bore you. Um, but capturing audio and video is definitely one of the most important things. Now, some people, especially my new planners that I coach, are like, I don't have $15,000. Like, that's okay. You have an iPhone or you have a smartphone and it takes video. So learn how to use your little voice memos and, like, do Facebook Live. It is F-R-E-E. -E. It is free, people. Whenever my branding manager, he's like, he's like, you got to do this Facebook Live thing. I'm like, I don't have time for that. Like, I don't even have time to eat and pee on a wedding day. Are you kidding me? How many of y'all time lapse your events? Anybody? So by time lapsing our events, <clears throat> when parents argue with me, they're like, well, my other daughter got married at a country club and the labor was not $30,000. And I'm like, well, this daughter wants to get married at the Country Music Hall of Fame. A, it's a public museum. B, it closes at 3 p.m. C, you want your guests to come in at 5.30. That gives us two and a half hours to set up. And she wants this enchanted forest for 350 people. So what's going to happen is for a week, we're going to um, rent a warehouse and build the trees and rent some big, big trucks and bus everything in. I'm gonna have about 200 people setting up your daughter's reception. So that's why your labor is 30 grand. And so I time lapsed their event. That's the very first time that I did that because I'm like, he was so mean to me. He was so rude and so mean. And I don't take it personal because after the wedding, they're all drunk and they're like, this is the best thing ever, I'm sorry. And yes, that happened. But I don't take it personal because again, they don't know what they don't know. But when people now question, I'm like, go watch the time lapse. And like when the dad got the time lapse, he was like, oh my gosh, there's more people setting up than like guests at the wedding. I'm like, yeah, and I have to pay all those people. And without these people, I'm no one. Everyone's like, oh, Angela. I'm like, no, 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 this is not about me. I'm not even at every wedding that I do at all. 
And I tell people that. They're like, but you're going to be there, right? I'm like, I'm not your friend. I am going to plan and design and line everything up. And 10 days before your wedding, it better be perfect. And I could be hit by a bus or my plane could go down and any of my girls could pick up your timeline and Google Drive and run the best event ever. So it's good that I'm not a one-man show. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. So another reason that it's good to make sure you back up. But time lapses in video really, really help educate. Okay, run through this quickly. Ingredient five, process. Share your process. If you don't have a process, think about having a process and put the process in place and communicate your process. So again, my alarm. Ah, okay. So discuss the expectations. I tell them there's four things that you need me for. Don't call me. I'm not gonna answer the phone. I'm in meetings. And when I'm with you, I'm with you 100%. And if I'm not in a meeting, I'm teaching. And if I'm not doing either of those, I'm with my sister's kids, four little annoying kids. And I cannot answer the phone. So I schedule everything. And I tell them that. Hey, if you have an emergency, text me or get to Allison and I will be there for you 100%. But you gotta schedule it. You've gotta respect time. You've gotta respect time. So we schedule everything. Phone calls, we pre-schedule all of our meetings in advance. You gotta know your role and stay in your lane and work as a team with your vendors. We go over our contract, our agreement, we just don't send it. It's like, la da 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 please sign this. It's like, I understand what you're getting. And then again, we charge monthly. So if I spend 40 hours that month, you're gonna get billed for 40 hours. If I don't talk to you for four months, you're not gonna get a bill from us. So you're only paying for what you need. Ingredient six, experience. I say, pull back the drape, show your clients how you do it behind the scenes. Again, it goes back to education. So how we do it behind the scenes is we divorce pen and paper completely. And so we train our clients and our vendors how to use Dropbox, how to use Google Drive, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. But it provides really good customer service and people actually love it. Yes, I get pushback, but it's like people who ask me to mail them a contract or whatever, like service list, like it's all on my website and I don't do snail mail and if this is how this is in the beginning, I'm not changing my process and you are not a good fit for us. So I'm sorry. Um, your experience as a, as a planner or a vendor or music or baker, like your experience is important too. So again, you've got to go back to what do you love? Who do you love? And what I've learned is I've learned to invest in others and surround myself with the right people. It doesn't necessarily mean the people I like or like want to hang out with um, because as a high orange, high oranges who are very entrepreneurial, like all over the place, we want to hire people that we like, which is a bunch of other oranges, high oranges usually, usually, but that's not how my life rolls at all. Like I have to have blues, I have to, golds are the most, without my golds, like again, I'm just a girl with ideas. So without the, I can be gold, but like I'm miserable. I don't like doing to-do lists. I like making them and giving it to somebody who loves it because that's not what I want to do. So I saved up, I saved money. I was smart in the beginning. I knew how to save money, but I didn't really know how to make it. But that was from working in healthcare. So I worked three jobs for like nine years. Not because I had to. I'm not married, I don't have kids. It's not about the money. I loved my healthcare stuff and I loved teaching gymnastics and I loved planning weddings. But the older you get, time is precious. Where you say, people say, like young people say, time is money, time, and it is, it is. Our, our time is valuable. But if you're sick and you're dying, or my grandmother's 90, and the most precious, valuable thing is time. You can't buy your time back. So you gotta look at how you're spending your time. So like our team now, now again, I did all this for a good seven years by myself. Social media didn't exist then, by the way. Um, but now we have somebody that like helps with the communications, the media, the branding, our website people, our accountant, our business manager, and then we have an intern program. But again, if any of these people quit, 
or bowed out on me, I know how to do it because I did it myself. So knowing how to do it, like I tell people, I would never ask you to do something that I wouldn't do because I've already done it. So don't complain to me. Oh, some of the interns, Lord. But don't complain. So we're going to talk about this later technology. These are a lot of the free apps that we use in the office. Um, we talked about a few of these. And again, I'm going to go more into it later this afternoon. And again, in this presentation, it should be shared in your Dropbox. You guys should have all these apps. But pretty much everything that I talked about is in there. So I'm going to say it again. Like the younger people, time is money. And then time is precious and it's priceless. And again, that's one thing that we can't buy. And so to recap the perfect recipe, passion, figure out who your ideal client is, communicate, educate, process, experience, and technology. To recap. Anybody more excited now? All right. Thanks, guys. We got through the first morning session. Now you guys have a break, and I hope you learn a lot today. Thanks for coming.